originally it began with a feature length screenplay that I was trying to you know get off the ground and um, it was largely based on experiences that I'd had as a jazz drummer myself with a with a very tough conductor and um, and in a very kind of cutthroat sort of world a world that you know made music feel like life or death to me and um, and so I wrote this script and you know for sort of obvious reasons had trouble convincing people to finance a, a jazz drummer movie um, <laughs> And the 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 idea actually, I was lucky enough to be to to find you know these producers in L.A. Um, uh, Helen Estabrook and Cooper Samuelson, um, who work with Jason Reitman and Jason Blum, and they, and they it was really those guys who had the idea to you know okay let let's see maybe maybe a way to actually get access to financing for this is to just take a scene from it um, and do it as a sort of standalone short. Um, so we gave the script to J.K. Uh, who very charitably signed on for a short with no no guarantee that it would lead to you know even a feature um, and uh, and so we shot the first kind of extended rehearsal scene in in the studio band room where Andrew was first kind of inducted um, painfully into the into that world and and we shot it and that kind of helped get the ball rolling I mean it, it was basically exactly a year later that we were shooting the feature um, with miles and JK and um, and it you know it also kind of helped us get our feet wet a little bit so um, Miles I'd seen in a his first movie, Rabbit Hole, um, and it was came out around the same time that I was writing the first draft of the script, actually, and so it really, it's, it's you know, when you see an actor kind of, uh, an actor you've never seen before, no one had seen him before on screen, before that movie, um, uh, just arrive, fully formed, arrive as this sort of, uh, I mean, the fact that he, to me, he, he, he just, he became the heart and soul of that movie in, in a very small but pivotal role. Not, some, I mean, you know, and and so I remember watching it and and kind of immediately thinking I have to find some way to work with him. Um, and certainly he seemed to he seemed to pertain to the role I was writing in the script, the role of Andrew. Um, you know, a few years passed in terms when it you know in terms of revising the script, then finding the money, doing the short. Um, so there was a little bit of a circuitous journey. Um, but I re I even remember when I took the short to Sun we took the short to Sundance to kind of again help give it a platform. And Miles was there that year with the spectacular now. Um, uh, which is another wonderful film of his, and and I remember going to your Q and A um, at the Eccles Theater, where we later premiered Whiplash, um, sitting in the audience, you know, silently <laughs> planning my moves. <laughs> and uh, it worked. Like you got, you got me, baby. Yeah. Oh man, you reeled me in. <laughs> and um, so I was lucky to, you know, I, I was, in a way, I was just lucky that that you know when the script did finally fall on, My on Miles' lap, that he that he did it. So he he was someone we kind of had in mind right from the get go. And then Terry, really, once we had these two guys, it really became about shaping the world around them. And um, and both with you know actors who I loved like Paul Reiser and Melissa Benoist, but also um, real musicians. It was really important to me that that most of the roles of you know play th most of the musicians in the film be played by real musicians or real music students and um, so that was its own kind of casting process most of those people had never been on screen before and right. you know I, I wanted to do the film it, uh, you know I just finished Divergent and I, th I think from by the time that ended to when we were starting it was like you know six weeks so I, I think I took you know, maybe like two weeks just to kind of come back from Chicago and unpack my stuff and then we jumped right into the rehearsals which for me was Basically, Damien knocking at my door <laughs> and with a drum set, and I told him I already had one, but we it was in pieces and had dust all over it, so he brought his shitty drum set. We <laughs> set it up in my basement and, you know, just kind of talked about music. He gave me Raging Bull and the movie Control mm -hmm. and said, these are movies I want you to watch, which I did not. You did not. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen Raging Bull before. It's a great movie. And you still have my copy of Control. <laughs> I think I gave it back to you. No, you did not. We'll discuss this later. Uh, semantics. <laughs> and so I gave, um, yeah, so we, we did, you know, started playing jazz, uh, jazz music, and I, I had lessons three days a week for about four hours a day. Mm. And it was tough, because even though I have played drums since I was 15, and I've played music my whole life, I was not, I played saxophone in jazz band, and I had a little bit of, you know, knowledge with that, but for jazz drumming, I mean, I felt, you know, especially once J Damien told me that I would, I would be the one playing, you know, these songs, Whiplash, and he gave me the songs of Whiplash, and he gave me Caravan, and we, you know, we plotted out exactly what measures I had to know, but for the most part, yeah, you got to be familiar with the whole song, because 
just the way we were shooting it, a lot of the time it was either with playback or not with playback, but I was so scared to be messing up in front of all of these actual musicians. Right. So life imitating art, it was just all a very authentic experience, and uh, except for being terrified of JK because he's such a softy. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I, just holding the stick, you know, traditionally is such was such a weird feeling. And yeah. Damien and I have these beautiful, uh, you know, iPhone videos of my first few rehearsals, and I was just like, I can't do it. I was like, it feels just, you know, it just I, I, does this look good? Because I feel s just so stupid, you know, moving around it. And, mm -hmm. and uh, slowly but surely, kind of got to a place where, where I felt, you know, I, I, I felt I felt really good moving moving around the kit. Yeah. We actually uh, we shot. Uh, most of a day in, in Fletcher's apartment, uh, uh, stuff with just me home alone, and, and there were several hints about, you know, what, what his life uh, might have been, you know, at the time and, and prior to that. And, uh, and, and Damien, in his infinite wisdom, decided not to use any of that in the movie, <laughs> despite the fact that we spent a lot of time shooting it. <laughs> um, and, and to leave, uh, to leave, Fletcher uh, uh, as a more mysterious uh, character and, and, and not investigate his, his backstory. Um, I, I, I don't, I, I never actually had a specific, you know, this is why this guy does what he does, other than what we sort of established in that, in that, uh, in those scenes that we shot, which was, you know, this is a guy that, that used to have more of a life, obviously, w you know, is a talented musician, has, you know, had, uh, uh, you know, wanted to be a, a great jazz musician, is a very good jazz musician, piano player, conductor, but, but ultimately came to, uh, to realize that his, his purpose in life was, was to find and cultivate uh, greatness and to, and to uh, find somebody who had that potential and, and, and pull it out of them. And, uh, and I, I've used this <laughs> before too, but you know, I, I, if pulling that out, if pulling greatness out of somebody means pulling their internal organs out of them <laughs> at the same time, that's okay, as long as I'm getting what I want out of this person, as long as I'm getting absolutely the most that this, that this person has to possibly give. Um, I think a lot of music sequences in movies these days are, for my money, shot the wrong way. You know, there's, it's sort of, th there's the, the tendency these days is kind of almost imported from reality TV where you get musicians on the stage or dancers or whatever, you set up seven cameras, you roll them, and then you figure it out in the cutting room. Um, so it was important to have a pre-plan kind of going in and then to have Tom's very sort of acute sense of tempo and timing and rhythm um, to make those cuts feel just right, not just be a transposition of what had been kind of in the animatics, but really sane with the, with the music. This film, I, I always said, I, I think so many people can relate to it because I think we have all had, have we all had that teacher who really pushed us, saw something in us that we didn't see in ourselves. And I guess the question for the group here, if you can each just kind of address it in your own way, is there a limit? When is enough enough? And it, do the ends justify the means for greatness? Who wants to start? <laughs> <coughs> I'll start because Damien should finish because, you know, he, he's the one with the brain up here, frankly. Um, uh, I mean, I'm not, you know, I'm not saying anything. Yeah. It's true. <laughs> um, I think, I think you, you have I, a brain uh, as well. I but, think. But Miles. No, I meant uh, of, the, of the people directly involved in the making of the film, clearly. Um, I, yeah, I, I, I think... As you said, most most of us have had a, a mentor, a teacher, you know, who who was some kind of a version of this, you know, pushing and pulling things out of us. For me, the closest thing I had was a uh, a couple of coaches in high school football who were just, you know, over the over the line <laughs> by a great degree. I, and I had some some music teachers actually who were who were very uh, inspirational and who were real perfectionists and and who demanded a lot and. And uh, and directors in in both in theater and uh, and in television and film, but mostly in theater. You know, in my very early days, who you know who would sort of see the bag of tricks that I had learned, and 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 you know appreciate it and see, okay, well this is effective and that's working okay, but you know I, I'm I'm not going to settle for that. You can do better. You can do more. I I need you to show me this this degree of subtlety or or. 
um, or, or whatever it was they were looking for. As far as the end justifying the means, I, uh, you know, um, I, I love that the film inspires that debate and, and that the film doesn't answer that question for us, you know, that there's an ambiguity there at the end and people um, take different things away from it. Um, my personal take is uh, I'd rather have a life and a pretty girlfriend <laughs> if I was Andrew Neiman, but that's, that, that's my true. take on it. <laughs> Very true. Yeah, and you know, similarly, I I think, and it's the way that J.K. performed it too. You can kind of see, and he, he gets that great you know monologue at the jazz club at the end. But you can you can kind of understand the the actual person behind there, and that it's not just somebody yelling you know profanities and vulgarities and and uh, yeah, because that's boring, and and you've seen that, and nobody nobody would give a shit about that kind of uh, that character. And, for me, I had a baseball coach that was just an asshole for the sake of being an asshole, and I didn't like respect really what he was talking about. I didn't, th I didn't think he was all that informed with what he was talking about, and so that kind of went in one ear out the other. And then, you know, I had a, a you know a theater teacher that was would kind of tear you down and stuff, but it with with that particular teacher it made me just want to uh, you know work work harder and and prepare more. So I I think everybody's different. I've learned as I get later on that, yeah, maybe I like a little more, you know, tough love when, when I was a young kid, you know, 16, 17, maybe I was a little more vulnerable and probably would have got, as they say on Workaholics, I got a little butt hurt <laughs> about it. I don't know if it's the audience for Workaholics, but, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, so I, you know, I think it's whatever, whatever makes you, whatever makes you, uh, makes you happy.